Okay, what order is this guy? Hopefully you said Hemiptera. Um, these triangles on the back that are big is a key character and the top part, you know it's not a beetle because this triangle is big um, and the wings get clear down here. So this is Hemiptera. If you turned it over you would see sucking mouth parts which would be another good clue instead of um, kind of grasping mouth parts like beetles have. Um, so these guys um, are the true bugs. Um, both the adults and nymphs are aquatic. They have these piercing sucking mouth parts which you can see here. Um, there's a lot of different body shapes and we'll do five different families out of, there's 15 total. Um, so we're going to skip some of those ones that are very small in size and that I don't see as often. Um, so we will go through all of these. They each have a, most of them have a different body shape and some of them will be things that you've heard of before. Um, the first one is distinctive if you look at its mouth. These are called water boatmen. They're plant eaters. So they have this um, curved round mouth and that's for scraping algae off of things. They don't have those pointy mouth parts that will stab you. So it is safe to pick these up. All the other hemiptera, all bets are off. They could kind of stab you if they feel threatened. They have a broad head. Their eyes overlap with the prothorax, meaning that this part comes over part of their eyes, which is important. Um, their body is elongate and oval, very oval shaped. Um, the dorf dorsal surface is flattened with these narrow cross lines. And the front legs are short and have kind of a scoop shape to them. In this picture, you can't even see the front legs. That's how short they are. Um, let's see what else we have. The hind legs are kind of oar-like with fine hairs. So these are swimming hairs, and these help them um, swim through the um, water quickly. But they kind of bounce around if you pull them out of the water, and it's because they're moving these back and forth trying to swim with them. These are the things you're most likely to confuse with Corixidae. This is Nodonectidae. These are back swimmers, not water boatmen. These guys will bite you. <laughs> They're predators. They have pointy mouths, but they even look differently um, from the top. Um, they swim upside down, hence the name back swimmer. And when they're resting at the surface, their body is typically tilted with the head downward. Characteristics, they have hind legs modified for swimming with long swimming hairs. The front um, legs are not scoop-like. See, they have um, points, um, like claws, instead of um, a scoop. Their wingtips are clear, which you can see here, without any veins. And their eyes are relatively close together, se typically separated by less than one width the width of one eye. So that makes it different than the water boatman. The water boatman's eyes are separated more. Um, but if you look at these front legs um, and you look at the mouth parts, that should be plenty to tell you that it's different from the water boatman. Bellistomatidae, these guys get gigantic. Um, not all of them are gigantic. Um, but they're called the giant water bugs because they're one of the biggest insects you're going to find in, it, in water anywhere. Um, they're 12 to 65 millimeters long. They're very flattened on their back. Um, they have what's called raptorial front legs. They're these super grasping, very strong front legs for holding on to prey. This is going to grab a tadpole, a small fish. These guys are voracious. Um, the hind legs are flattened and distinctly fringed as well. Um, so there are some. The genus Bellistoma um, is not so giant, more like um, the length of part of my finger. However, there is one called Lithoceros that gets really, really large. Um, you can see a female here. You might find them with eggs on their back. The females carry their eggs. 
as a form of parental care. All right, the next one is one you're gonna know. Um, these are water striders, Gerardae. They have long, long legs, which you can see here. The back two legs are really long, and the front ones are still pretty long, but um, not as much. Their body, you can see, is um, very um, long, um, not as round. Um, and the hind femur, um, this part right here, is longer than the abdomen. Um, and this is what helps them take advantage of surface tension of water and walk on the water. So they can eat things um, that fall on the water and they don't go under the water. All right, the next one is one of my favorites, um, Nepidae. These are water scorpions. They're not actually scorpions at all. They're, of course, insects. Um, there are two types. Um, there's ones that look like walking sticks, and there's ones with fatter bodies. Um, they um, don't, I mean, they do have piercing mouth parts, but to be honest, I've picked them up before. I have never gotten bit by these guys, but they, I guess, could. They are predators. They will eat things like tadpoles. Um, they have these big grasping arms for catching their prey. Um, a very important um, uh, character here is um, this right here. The caudal respiratory appendage is at least a quarter length of their body. So this is a respiratory appendage. I like to call them butt snorkels because they're basically tubes and they stick them up like a snorkel so that they can breathe air, which means they're not very sensitive to water quality because they're always breathing air. Um, but they are these long tubes. These are basically like snorkels, but um, they're gonna call them respiratory appendages. I think butt snorkel is easier to remember. Um, so anyways, that's kind of interesting. Did wanna point out that some of them resemble the Bellistomatidae, the giant water bugs, because they have a similar body shape this one does here. Um, but they don't have the flattened hind legs, and um, Bellistomatids don't have these respiratory appendages. Um, some also resemble Gerardae, so the water striders, but the hind femur is not longer than the abdomen like they are in Gerardae. So these are some characters to help you out. Um, but look for these snorkels and these grasping legs and you'll probably be fine. This is the form I find most commonly. So I find these in ponds all the time, um, just floating in the water column with their respiratory appendage, breathing air up in the center of the water column. Okay, what order is this guy? Hopefully you said Megaloptera. Um, so these have a whole bunch of different common names. It's usually easier for me just to say Megaloptera, but it includes dobs and flies, alder flies, and fish flies. It's another entirely aquatic order. They have chewing mouth parts. Um, some of the adult males have these weird pincher-like extensions, um, and they have flattened, elongated bodies, and they have these large paired gills on their abdomen abdominal segments. So this is a key character. Look for um, chewing mouth parts. Um, they don't have piercing mouth parts or anything like that. They have these paired gills. And we're going to do two different families, Corydalidae and Cialidae. And these are the most common. These are the things I find um, most of the time when I'm sampling aquatic systems. So Corydalidae are the Dobson flies and fish flies. The larvae have eight pairs of um, filaments on the sides of the abdomens. They have two anal prolegs. These are like fake legs because um, we know that insects have six legs. Um, these are fake um, legs at the end. They're found underwater, uh, under rocks in moving water. And they can be very large. So this shows two centimeters, but they can get larger than that. Um, Cialidae are the alder flies. So in the Cordalidae, we had eight pairs of filaments on the sides of the abdomen. Cialidae, we have seven pairs 
and they have a central caudal filament. So there's no anal prolegs, but there are the this caudal filament, and that'll be what tells the part. So if you look for these filaments on the side, you can count them, or you can just look at the end for this character, um, and that'll tell apart chordality and sialidae. They're most common in slow-moving portions of streams and ponds with muddy bottoms.